here we go this episode better be as considerably better than the last episode because that last episode older Mahmoud younger woman was fucking terrible I hate the guy right strip club looks like we're gonna be Richard Richard's me bro we're gonna do this in the strip club baby she's beautiful she's sexual she's tough how do you get past being a customer and say outside of work without paying for tons of dances oh this could be a toughie this like because a uh, this is a this is a tough situation but me and richard are gonna get through Hi, this guys got cuphead today um heard it's difficult but obviously not for a legend like me i've jump, smashed jump, it jump. mate uh what's this uh okay it's quite <laughs> jump he's trolling hold for a high jump hold for a high jump high jump one two all right, bear with it, guys. Uh, miss, miss all my for the donation. All right, let's get on this. Um, no, that doesn't work. All right. Uh, okay. I can't yeah. remember the video game Maybe company. Maybe down. So just keep review. Jumping. Um, just keep jumping. Double magazine. Jump. Okay. That tried to play yeah, Cuphead and got stuck in this position. I this is what you're taking the piss out of. Fucking shit, eh? Oh, lol. What's funny? It's not funny. This is not easy, guys. It's a hard game. Who was it? In your head. I'll get it. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll get it. I didn't die, at least. All right, ready? One, two. Ah. Piece of shit game, yeah. John Tag, you are shit. Polygon. That was it. Polygon man, when they played Cuphead, they got stuck on the tutorial because they couldn't figure out how to jump then dash. You bunch of fucking muppets. How can these people do this job and like fail so hard? Fuck you and your fuck your family. All right, John Tag. I tell you what, I'm shit at games. Maybe I'm shit at games because I spend all my time fucking your mum. That's why I'm shit at Cuphead. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Fuck your mum, innit? <laughs> you legend. You've done it yet? How oh, are you gonna get past the, the tutorial, bro? Oh, he's being swatted. Fuck me, he's got a gun. No! What the fuck is going on? <laughs> yes, I got shot. So, yeah. Super Seducer 3, I'm going to be a ghost. There we go. Uh, Watch well some space. That's hilarious. What this game is so out there, it's unbelievable. He's like, he's completely self aware now. Go on, son. Right, let's go to the strip club. Ready for some funny battle. Oh, John. Fuck you. Fuck Twitch. Fuck Cuphead. I think my controller was broken anyway. I'm going to the strip club. I like his desk. That's the right option. Uh, well done. You avoided a horrible death. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because if you would have chose that option, you have no fucking idea what he's talking about there. What's the best night to visit a strip club? Dull Tuesday, obviously. That's right. Um, Tuesday, there's going to be less people. Often she's forced to work on these kind of off nights in order to work at the weekend and make loads of money. And so it's a good opportunity to sit down, have a like genuine conversation because the place isn't busy. Oh, I'm top boy at this. What a way. You've got to wear soft trousers because if you wear jeans, when you get a fucking semi lob on, it's going to really crush your fucking dick. And you need to have some flexibility. Because it's not worse than like sitting down with your, your penis between your legs. And then bang! Getting turned on. And it's caught between your leg and 
it's trying to expand and it's just causing you pain like that's no good you need soft trousers but then again yeah soft trousers somebody else might argue no no you don't wear soft trousers because then you show very easily how aroused you are but nah it's not worth it not worth the pain you go to a strip club you expect to be aroused wear soft trousers so you tend to pull an all out of the shop Soft trousers? I haven't heard of this one. Uh, yeah, so a friend of mine, Dave, in New York, um, told me this. He said that uh, the girls often complain if you wear jeans because they're kind of rough to the ah. touch. So if they're dancing and rub their legs on the jeans, it's uh, obviously, you know, problems. What the fuck? Good tip. I thought of a completely different reason. That was a lot of bullshit, actually. I'm just gonna go in in bloody leggings. Rock the spandex pants. Wait, who am I looking at? Her? Grab the girl by the ass to get her. Ooh, that could be good. Ask the stripper how much she paid for a fake ass and tits. Use Pro Jared's line to show you you respect women. <laughs> now, if you don't know anything about this tiny, tiny bit of controversy, there's a YouTuber named Pro Jared. I've I've watched a couple of his things. He's quite good. Um, he slagged the game off like he really really hated it. And from what I've heard, on Twitter or something, uh, Richard got a bit butt hurt, or whether he was butt hurt or whether it was just an awesome PR stunt. Um, started slagging him off, and I think originally he said that anybody who doesn't like the game, you'll have the did he say he would remove the rights to display it on YouTube, take the monetization off them? But you obviously you can't do that anyway. So I want to see what what Pro Jared's line was. I bet you it's some weak ass shit. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Hey, what's up? Hi. Why are there prostitutes here? <laughs> Why are there prostitutes here? <laughs> Roger! So, who's Roger? Your friend? Oh, fuck, not this guy. You alright, mate? How you doing? Good to see you. To leave? Where are we going? Private room? Champagne? Hang on. I need to get this. Let me see you, darling. So Charlotte, guy on YouTube called the girls in uh, the first game prostitutes. Is that mm. a good thing to say to them? What do you think, honestly? If they're not prostitutes, and even if they are, it's not very nice. It's right? not very nice. But the worst thing is if they actually watch it after, which they did. Oh, gosh. Can you, can you imagine? No. What if their mums watched it? Oh. It's not very nice. Mm -mm. Bad. This guy's hilarious. He's calling out all the people that slagged off his first game. What a hero. I don't even know who the guy... In the very first episode, he played a soundbite of someone from YouTube that slagged his game off. That had like a really, really weak pickup line. It wasn't even a pickup line because he didn't even finish it off. Fucking get in, son. Right, so what we're going to do... Go sit down and give the stripper you like good eye contact. That's how you do it in strip clubs. Now... A little side oh, story time with Scott again. Um, if you ever got to Thailand and... Well, yeah, I, I, no, it is. I've never really been... I've never been to a strip club. Oh, sorry. I've been to one strip club in, in England before and it was fucking dire. I mean, like, oh, my God. The, the, the calibre of the women were, like, scraping the barrel. I'm sure they were, like, 80 years old and shit. Like, fucking hell, they must have been dancing for, like, a good 50 years. Uh, dire. Devastating scarred me mentally for life but the only other strip clubs i've been to is in thailand and how do i say it strip clubs in the uk generally generally the strippers are strippers that's it that's where they, their job starts and finishes um no no outside time near sex near prostitution although i do know it does happen in Thailand, you go to the strip clubs, they are pretty much prostitutes that you can take home if you are prepared to pay the bar fine 
to take her out of because obviously if you if you've taken her out the the club the club can potentially lose business so you'll pay the mama san who is the woman who owns or the manager of that that bar the bar fine to take the woman the woman home with you so yeah when when you go when you go from what i've heard <laughs> from what i've heard right is you sit down it's dead relaxed you're not like pounced upon or anything it, it, it's quite a nice atmosphere to be honest you can get your drink or whatever if you like a girl and this is the thing if you like the look of a girl and she likes the look of you it's it's her discretion catch her eye if she likes you she'll come down and talk to you buy her a drink whatever have a chat if she doesn't like you then she won't come down so at least you know that if she comes down to talk to you there's like at least there's a a mutual consensual likeness between the two of you if that makes sense um and then if everything is going well do your strip strip club thing bish bash bosh if you want to take her home ask her and do the deed and outside of the strip clubs in in thailand well i say thailand it's it's the only place i've been where they had strip clubs like that has been bangkok and <laughs> close to the strip clubs there's sex hotels which are blatantly just hotels for that like the dead cheap you can go there they're filthy filled with drug ease and it's generally not a nice place so you can you can take them home with you which is generally not advised you do that because if you take her into your private space there's stories where you've been robbed she's taking your money taking your clothes your your eye watches anything she's had her boyfriend or her colleague go with her to help steal the gear while while you're in bed or in the shower or something like that funny enough that actually did happen now i wasn't in bangkok when this happened i was actually in um was it Uda? not udon thani that's in the north the northeast i was in nong Lumpur, which is a it's a village in the northeast of thailand and i was stopped in a hotel i was just by myself doing like sightseeing and uh, i had some thai friends over there but there was this dutch guy that was also staying in the same apartment complex as me and he was fucking useless like oh my god this story could go on forever but i'm gonna tell you anyway right because fuck it why not um the first time i met him he was like he come over when i was when i was paying the 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 hotel the, the apartment complex the money and he was like oh where, where do i get to uh, my clothes washed i was like oh in our place around the corner that's quite cheap it'll do all your washing for you and this that and the other um and as i said that the the woman at the apartment complex was like oh like we we do your washing here and like it's much cheaper i was like oh champion so we both got our washing done there and then the next time i saw him a couple of days later he was fucking he had his leg in a cast he had his arm in a cast he was fucking battered bruised fucking big cuts down his head i was like what the fuck happened to you mate he was like oh i, I rented out a car um now he rented out a car got absolutely hammered smashed on alcohol and then about three o'clock in the morning he decided to drive the car back to the apartment complex now this apartment complex because it's like in the the nongbo is like a village it's it's not densely populated you've got your main road that runs through it and to the side of the road is like your general guttering uh, for like the, the water runoff but this gutter is like it's pretty much like a moat if you imagine a moat around the castle it's deep and it's separated by big concrete well thick concrete narrow bridges just to, it's narrow enough to get a car across so you can drive from the main road through into the apartment complexes now what he's done was he's he's headed down this road and he's been going a bit too fast he's tried to turn into one of these roads and instead of driving across that little bridge he's actually drove into the moat and smashed head on face first at the fucking the bridge and is caught i saw the pictures when he showed us the pictures it looks like the guy should have been dead his car was crushed and what he was saying was he went oh. i was in the moat screaming for help for five hours because obviously it's a village there's no street lights or anything like that he was in this moat for five hours until someone woke up uh found him there and rang the ambulance and police to get him there 
what a dickhead. You're a dickhead, blood. So that's that story with him. And then a couple of nights later, uh, I got a knock on the door from the same guy fucking smoking a joint. Now, in Thailand, you might think, oh, anything goes. It doesn't. Thailand, Thais have got a zero tolerance policy on any drugs. Even if, if people might think weed's nothing, you'll go to fucking jail for, for life, for weed, for most things. There's loads of people locked up there because they've been ignorant when they go over there doing stupid things like that. No, no, that, that's a fucking a jailable offence. And I was like, mate, what are you doing? You're fucking locked up. And he was like, oh, you went there. Uh, I've been robbed. I went, what's happened? You went, oh, I took this girl back home last night. A uh, prostitute from one of the... I didn't even know where he, where he managed to pick her up, right? But, um... He's went, he, just like I said before, he went in the shower after after doing the damn thing. And what she done was she picked up his wallet um, and just left. Just left the building, ran up, fucking ran away. And he'll never find that again in the village, wherever he picked up from. She'll not, she'll not go back there. So, yeah, yeah I, don't know how, I don't know how much he said. He lost about fucking 500, 600 quid. But that's a canny pail for her, like, Aye, not bad, not bad. So that's my little story time about uh, Thailand for you there. So let's go and find out what we're actually going to do in the game. Go sit down and give the stripper your like good eye contact. This is this is what you do. There you go. Jobs are good. Have we just arrived? Yeah, a few minutes ago. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well. How are you? I'm good also. So in the strip club, it's, it's all reversed. So, you know, whereas a man would normally do the approaching, in the strip club, uh, the woman does the approaching. So the guy kind of has to send this invitation, which would be a smile and some eye contact. And that's a nice, subtle approach in role reversal, isn't it? For the guy to let the woman approach him. That's right, and you said you approached sometimes, didn't you? Yeah, I did approach. Cool. <laughs> Damn. My name is Amber. Nice to meet you, Amber. Nice to meet you too. I can't really see if Amber's good looking or not, but from first impression, she looks a bit ropey like. Right, that name is way too nice for you, I reckon you should pick a much more slutty name. Listen, darling, we all know it's not every. Oh, that's shit. Connect with her by telling her your mum's a stripper. No. <laughs> your mum's stripper name was Amber as well. What the fuck? Whip your dick out to show you are a better stripper. We need to see this. Listen, I'm sure you're a fantastic stripper. Very beautiful, sexy girl. But I think I'm better. Check this out. Look, look, look. Oh my god, look, guys. What a pencil dick. Come, come. Ah, don't shame me, pencil dick. <gasps> <laughs> oh Just do the helicopter and prove them wrong. <laughs> this is harassment 101. Ugh. This is harassment 102. And that's exactly He's getting hit in the bollocks. Right. Um Well it depends. Would she really laugh at you like that? Because surely she'd be like, hmm, I want to get as much money out of you as you can because you're keen as fuck. Right. Ask if she chose the stage name for a special reason. Years ago, I had dated a dancer and she told me that she chose her stage name because it had some special meaning to her. It had some spiritual connection. So did you choose the name Amber for any special reason? I doubt it. Amber. Uh, what yes, I did. Uh... When I was a child, my granny gave me an amber necklace, so okay. amber means a lot to me. And that's why, because it was from your granny? Yeah. Okay. That that's is nice sick. Story. Yes, great idea to use the word stage name, it keeps it professional. As opposed to... Stripper name? Stripper name, I not so good. <laughs> not so good. <laughs> And I think it's a nice name, and my favourite type of stone. Ah, actually it's not a stone, it's fossilised tree resin. Oh, interesting. I didn't know. So basically you're an old tree bitch. You're, you're named after old tree jizz. How do you feel about that? Right. 
Ask if she's ever performed for Leo Show for money. Ooh, tell her you approve her name. Nah. Amber is cheap, so I think I've chosen perfectly. Oh my god, that's amazing. Right, she doesn't want to hear any more facts about Amber. No one cares. Oh, these, these choices are a bit shit, aren't they? That's oh, gonna have to be. Ah, oh, let's just call her cheap. No, let's not. Let's let's try and be professional. We're trying to get laid here. Oh no, actually not. We're trying to take her out on a date. We'll go with that. I think it's great because it's subtle, and subtle is much more attractive. Too many girls are too full on, and I prefer something more real. And I think you're more real. Am I wrong? Yeah, you're right. Very nice uh, answer. You know, a, a lot of dancers have less subtle names, let's say. So um, Amber's quite a nice one. So why not? Why not compliment her on that? Let me guess. It's your first time here. I can tell. No, I just came. I'm waiting for my friend Mahmoud. He should be here in I don't know half oh, hour or something. No. But I had some stress with uh, Cuphead, so I just came here to relax. Um, by the way, what's your name? Then again, even though he's meeting Mahmoud in, in half an hour, this is the best place for Mahmoud because he's not going to get success anywhere else. He's really not. He's fucking devastating. Oh, my stage name is Ravinda. She can call me Dick. Big Dick. My name's Richard, but my friends call me Dick. And I can just tell that you love Dick. I didn't tell him to say that. Yes, that your middle name is Tiny. No. Vivian Francis Leon, my middle name. Yeah, I think it is Tiny. No, it's not. I don't know if it is. Big Tiny Dick. Or Tiny it's Big good. Dick. Might be good. medium sized. Tiny. Depends which way you see it. Isn't it? You like that one, Charlotte? Uh, no, not particularly my cup of tea. What, are you trying to say you don't like big dicks? Everyone loves a big dick. I love a big dick. I like them. Big, throbbing, and girthy at the bottom, slim at the top, like a rocket. <laughs> right. Ravinda, Thank let's find out why he's called Ravinda. Is Ravinda. It's a mystical god of wisdom. Oh, you seem very wise. Oh, thank you. You like the name? I like it. That's the right answer. It's a little moment, little joke that you can you can have any time. I think the uh, dancers have probably heard it before, but it's still pretty funny. And it puts you on the same level with her, doesn't it? Oh, you both have a stage yeah. name. There's some common ground. But really, like, are you really going to be going to a strip club to try and get a real date with a stripper? Like, would you would you really put yourself in that position? Is that not just... Thing is wrong, I know strippers, they're not like excluded from relationships. But surely a stripper wouldn't pursue a relationship from within a strip club, within a place of work. Surely she should pursue it elsewhere. And if you were a bloke, you wouldn't go to a strip club to try and pursue a real relationship with a stripper. You're just, you're just setting yourself up to fucking fail, aren't you? I understand if you're going there just to guard balls deep and then pump and dump, but I kind of see it being a long, long-term thing. Are you a band player? Obviously you work in a band or have some other serious office job. Yeah, it's kind of serious. I have a pharmaceutical business, but I'm quite relaxed about it. And also I do some uh, YouTube videos and Twitch streaming, so I've got some variety in what I do. That's nice. Mm -hmm. oh, hello. Oh, yes. Flashing the cash, get some ass. That's the bloody... That's the, the ticket right there. Let us sit in your lap so you can get a better view of boobage. Of course we're going to do that. Tell us you better not because you'll jizz in your pants. It's probably true. <laughs> do you know what it is? If, if she sat in my lap like that, You'd, you'd slowly start to see her elevate higher and higher because like I'll be getting aroused son right we're gonna do this we're gonna let her sit there because uh, we're the boss 
Yep, baby, look at this, huh? Let me see. Come on, what are you doing? What the hell? Yeah, I'm. I didn't tell you to lick my tits. What are you doing? What are you doing? Normal, yeah? Boo, bitch. Yeah. What? Clearly not the right option. What the fuck? I didn't tell him to lick up boobs, I just told him to let her sit there. We're gonna go for this, it could be comedy gold. Listen, uh, it's kinda of squashing my balls, do you mind? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Ooh. are they okay? Yeah, it should be alright. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Like <laughs> okay. That could be funny, right? That could actually be funny, yeah. It could be funny with with a stripper. It who depends sits on laps how all the she time. takes it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Don't be out there. So it's it's, it's, it's untested. You're trying Don't to see. Don't you like my body? Yeah. Body's banging, banging, baby. Right. We're not going to tell her how beautiful she is. We're not going to tell her she's fat. Although that would be hilarious. Tell her that she's too good for the stripper life and save her. Don't be the white knight. That is the worst thing you could possibly do. Oh, I'm here to save you. Tell you what, now what it is. Now all those women you think you want to save and think you need saving, guess what? Don't fucking need saving. That's, oh my God, that's amazing as well. In Thailand, man, you'll always, you'll always, these fucking people that go there from foreign countries are always dime a dozen and they've always got the same fucking story. Oh yeah, eh, the girlfriend, eh, she, I saved her from eh, the strip club. I saved her from this life. Mate, you fucking didn't. She was there for a reason, knowing what she's doing. And that's the fucking narrative that she wants you to believe. Because fucking foreigners, especially Westerners, that go there. I'm not saying all Westerners are like this. I'm saying the Westerners that go there for that specific reason. A lot of them are naive as fuck. Just, and that's why it's amazing going to Thailand if you like people watching. Because you can sit outside these places and just, just watch and it's, it's amazing and the atmosphere is great. I'd highly recommend anybody do it. Bang. Of course you're very sexy, but for me it's about the entire package, not just looks. I need to find someone's character sexy. And don't you find that sex is so much more powerful? Oh, look at her in the foreground. Yeah, I'm also looking for a deep connection and it's very important for me. That's good, then we have that in common. Oh, yes, I'm going to be a, a deep connection. This is a great way to start because she probably gets approached by the way she looks quite regularly. Exactly, so saying that you want something more is quite intriguing and yeah, I think someone in that kind of job uh, same with modelling, I guess. Uh, you don't want to be recognised only for your looks. And that's another thing on that note, right, not just for strippers. Not that I'm a professional at strippers or anything, right? But um, this is going to sound really fucking harsh, right? But fuck it. If a girl's not, like, absolutely stunning, like, if you know this girl's never been fucking telled she's, like, beautiful and, and, and nice, throughout her life even though she could be beautiful to you like it's nice for them to hear that do you know what i mean but if a girl is absolutely fucking stunning like you're just nash is stunning you just, every once in a while you can just let her know how good she's looking but that's going to be boring to her you're going to if you just come up with that line when she doesn't really know you she's going to know she's going to be like wait i fucking know i'm stunning you didn't need to tell us i hear it all the time you want to you want to tell her something Give her a compliment on something that she won't hear a lot. And she'll be like, alright, this guy now has a crack. So there's some knowledge bombs for you lads. There's some knowledge bombs. You know, I work at nights and all these beautiful girls, men look at me. And sometimes I feel really horny. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Let me ask you something. Yeah. What was the best sex you ever had? Ooh. Tell her she ain't know nothing about good sex till she's slept with you. Set the bar high. I'm the type of man that likes to set the bar low and over deliver. 
So I'll tell you here, pet, if you if if you like being disappointed, I'm the fucking man. <laughs> if you like, if you like five minute sex, in time to watch Coronation Street afterwards, I'm your fucking man. If you want to have three minute sex and have a good eight nine hours sleep afterwards, I'm your man. And then when she expects that, bang, hit her with the D. Fucking over deliver. But you've got to be careful on that because if you over deliver and she misses Coronation Street, then you're in trouble. So just be, be wary of that, lads. Be wary of that. Right, tell her, then move conversation away from sex. Ooh, this is tough. I want to get into talking about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Best sex I ever had. Oh, God. I think it was this um, girl I dated she called Margaret. And she just had this amazing ass. And I Don't go into that deep, yeah. I talked to her and I was just thinking, it's going to be great, you know. You Talking about the act, man, not like, the girl. Okay, sex time, obviously, but we have to do it doggy style. Because your ass is amazing. I had to take off her thing and she had this little pussy that like, looked so nice. What are you doing, mate? Bent her over the bed. Bang, bang, bang. I don't know, like 15 minutes. Reaching around, grabbing her boobs. Not as nice as your boobs, but, but pretty good. No, you're She's doing like, the compare and don't do that. Oh, I love it like that. Amazing. And then oh, that was about 20 minutes. Changed a few positions. In the end, she sucked me off. It was so cool. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best sex I ever had, but that's one of, one of the best ones. No, man. You're doing it all wrong, Richard. Richard, you're doing it all wrong. You've got to paint the picture. Don't talk about the act. Talk about the scene. Be like, yeah. Top of a skyscraper. Beachfront. Costa del Sol. A whack that was sex swing. On the air conditioning unit. On the roof. Bang. Fucked in the breeze. Had breeze in the hair. Breeze on my balls. Breeze in the fanny. Tropical as fuck. There you go. That's gonna get any. That's that's gonna get any funny wet. Just paint the picture in a in a head that, baby, you could be, flying high. In the future, with sex better than that, you know what I mean? Sunset on the horizon, deep orgasmic, sweat dripping down your back. Bang! <laughs> oh, fuck. Didn't do that either, lads. That was a joke, by the way. Don't do that. Probably don't discuss the best sex you've ever had. Just, you want to keep it mysterious. Like, being truthful here, not being a joke. Just, just, you want to be mysterious. Don't want to give her too much. Give her just a little that she wants to nibble on. And then reel it in. Reel it in later on. Keep her coming back for more. Oh, it's froze again. Come on. You know, just... Okay, I think it's enough. Yeah. You get the point. Yeah, 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 yeah I got it. Yeah. It's such a... Yeah, man, sexy. <laughs> uh, generally, when you meet confident women that can bring up the subject of sex or talk about sex, uh, you don't want to shy away from that because that could look like, you know, you just can't handle yourself or she's too much for you. Um, but conversely, you don't want to get really into it. So it's kind of uh, quickly acknowledging it and then changing the subject in this environment for sure and more generally too is the right way to go because presumably yeah i'd agree with that people talk to her about sex on a nightly basis so yeah you want to differentiate yourself from other people yeah because uh, you want to connect on a on a different level to the other clients ah fair enough no, i'll, I'll take that advice I that's good oh yeah and i want to have my own business in the future and also i want to be a twitch streamer damn titty streamer Challenge that to be more precise. This is I want to find out more. Well, those are great goals, and I really hope you achieve them. But something that will really help you. And do you mind me giving you some advice? Because I've worked in business for a long time, so you need to make your goals very precise. So really say instead of just I want to have my own business or I want to be you know on Twitch, say that I want to have my own online business that is selling this, that is that popular, that makes that much money. Really, really precise. You know, I want to be on Twitch. I want to be one of the top 100. Find out how many subscribers that means. And then you need to go backwards and find all of the steps that would take you there. 
make each one very clear and then you break it down into a series of small goals and then you can take action and constantly be moving towards your goals so make it really specific really precise always know what you need to do next and then you're much more likely to achieve your goals oh, sound advice really bro good advice. Yeah. anytime thank you very much This is a nice answer. Obviously, it's an opportunity to um, kind of demonstrate some wisdom and a little bit of a challenge while still being encouraging. Yeah, and you want to be treated professionally as well. Listen, do you think it's time for a dance? Oh, it's so tempting to say yes. They can earn money from the other guys, then come back to you. No. Yeah, I want to dance. Send that girl over. Okay, let's do it. Hey, you know what? You're a good girl. We could have one dance. Let's um, let's not do it here, though. Let's go to the private area. Yeah. yeah let's go. Come on. I know the way. Oh, look at that! Do you see that thing she's doing with her lips? That was dirty. We don't get to see it. What? What type of game is this? It's pretty good. So our strip club experts in New York actually say that it's all right to have some dances, um, but they're quite rich, mm -hmm. so that's all right. And then our guys in London who don't like spending so much money, uh, they say you don't need to. So uh, it really depends. You can do it both ways. Obviously, if you've got loads of cash, fine. If you have doesn't it take you out of you know, you're not there on a professional, you know, you're not there being professional with her on a client. It takes you back into the client zone if you have a dance from her. Yeah, I, I think that. I mean, it does, um, it does change the dynamic a little yeah. bit. But there's something where you recognise that she's got to work. So you're like, well, I find you beautiful and I'll pay for the dances. And while you're dancing, I'll talk to you and get to know you. And we'll and then sit down, have a drink, then maybe have another dance. And it at least shows that, um, you're generous and that you appreciate her physically, but it's it's a it's a um, yeah dodgy mm -hmm. potentially. Yeah, so there's no concrete here, concrete advice there. So you just do what you want. Go for I the dance rules. Yeah. That's good. And where's your favorite place? My favorite place is Cyprus. Oh, I love Cyprus. It has very beautiful nature and nice people. Okay, and how do you feel when you're there? I Amazing. feel very relaxed and like at home. Just happy. You know what? Have you been to Barcelona? No. I think you would love it there oh. because it has the sea, mm. surrounded by mountains, so you can you know always be in nature. But then you've got the city nearby, lovely food. You should definitely go. I think it's your kind of place. Yeah, it is. Cool. So off at a take her on holiday somewhere, find out her real name, ask if she. Ask if she's got any cocaine. My God, that is the best answer. Right. Now, another story time. Cyprus. Um, it's one of my favourite places to go on holiday. I absolutely love it. I like going to uh, Pretorius. And I couldn't even tell you where about in the island is. I think that's in the southeast. Pretorius. No, no, no. It's on the east. I'm pretty sure it's on the east, southeast area uh, of the island. Or is it? Famagusta? I don't know. I couldn't even tell you where... Pro wait there, wait there, right? Tell you what, I'm going to Google this shit while I'm fucking talking to you, right? So, I used to, me, I used to go with my parents. They used to take us when I was a, when I was a kid. Cyprus put our ass. So where is it then? Map. It's funny when you go to these places, but you don't actually know where it is on the map. And Google Maps has taken its fucking ages. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I thought it was. It's in the south, southeast, southeast of the island. But it's, it's a really, really nice country. Yeah, the only thing now is it's because of the euro and stuff. It's it's quite expensive. One, it's expensive to get there. It's about a four hour flight, and. It's generally expensive to everything's just either equal to what you pay in England or, or more expensive, especially since you're in a tourist destination. 
but the beaches are beautiful, the sand's so soft and fine. Uh, golden beaches, blue seas, lovely hot weather. Um, the people, the people are lovely as well. Uh, more so before than now. Now, well, Pretorius now is a lot more commercial like the the tourist area has been really really built up now you've got your fast food chains like mcdonald's kfc's you've got your aldi's your littles and stuff like that but when i used to go as a kid it was literally just a few bars and restaurants plonked in the middle of nowhere with a beach just like two minute walk from it and the people were true real locals that lived there and i, st I still know some of the people there today uh, there's a place in Pretorius called Super S and the owner of that's called Tassos. He's so nice. What a lovely man. Him and his wife that own the, the business. Um, I used to go there as a kid and he used to be like, what, what, what do you want? And I'd just be like, oh, four sausages and four bacons. And he'd just make like whatever you want. And he used to have a, a arcade machine next to him, Double Dragon. He used to play on that all the time. What he used to do was he, uh, whenever I'd come, He'd always open up the arcade machine so you've got infinite goals so you can just keep putting your coin in and keep playing. And then there's another place there. Now Super S is still there. If anybody goes to Cyprus Pretorius, it's still there. I recommend anyone go and check it out. Last time I spoke to Tassos, he was saying like how he doesn't know how long he's gonna be there. He's been there for years, so let's say it's good. He's been there a good twenty years. Uh but he was saying that he doesn't know how long he's gonna be there because since the area is getting more commercial, the ground rent and stuff's going higher, higher, higher. I don't know if he's going to be able to afford to stay there any longer. Another place that I was going is a HMS Flockas. It's a small little resort. It's got its own pool and it's got like its little apartments around the edge of it. Now we used to go there with me with my dad, and the the owner Salterius, he's dead now, bless him. But is his wife still there running the place? But again. Just the area around it's getting all commercial. I don't know how long they're going to be there. Like small home family run businesses. Uh, yeah, beautiful place. Well, I've gone off on a complete tangent. But one little story about that was I used to go there with my dad and his girlfriend. And their two daughters. Uh, both of whom I went to school with. Uh, yeah, it's probably a weird coincidence. Uh, but anyway, we, we used to rent an apartment out there. And I don't know what it is about the hot weather. But when I'm on holiday, I get the most raging, intense hard-ons that, like, just ever. Like, I'm so just vascular in that region. It's bloody unreal, right? But I, <laughs> oh, I went to bed, right? And I remember waking up in the morning with the most triumphant hard-on I've ever seen. I think it's the hardest I've ever been. Like, I'm sure I'd actually split my boxers in, in two. It was, like, poking out the hole in the boxers. And I had no covers on top of it because it was hideous. And it was just standing there just... It was angry as fuck, right? And um, when I got up, I must have had a lie in. Everybody was already up and ready. And everybody had to walk past my room, whose door was open, to get to the bathroom. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident everyone there saw how triumphant my cock was. And I was just like, yeah, yeah. That is a triumphant cock. So there's a little story for you um, about me exposing myself to me, my stepsisters. But uh, got to show them something they're impressed with, didn't you? <laughs> right, next. So I want to ask if she's got any cocaine because drugs are bad, but no, better the spice up the night. Listen, baby, this uh, whiskey is a bit weak. So you got something stronger, you know, a little bit of cocaine. White girl. Yeah, you got some? I, look, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just wait. Our security guy sells it, so yeah, yeah right. we'll go and get him. Go on then. Yeah, just wait. You're two gonna grams. get kicked out, mate. Two gram? You want two gram up here? Go on, son. Hey, yeah, man. You got the, you got the stuff. You got it? Hey, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Oi! Just a bit of coke, man. Come on. A little bit, half a gram. And a half a gram. Go on, be a bro. Never do drugs, right? Never. Do you have any? No. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, didn't do it yourself. 
drugs just day and day. I'm a, I find it fucking hideous. I find it disgusting. Drugs and smoking. No, I'm not on that shit. Like, I, I, I find it vile. Right, anyways. If I take on a holiday somewhere, no, don't do that because we're, we're not here. Find out our real name. Listen, I can't keep calling you Amber all night, so what's your... My name is Jenny. But don't tell anyone. Jenny? Jenny. Jenny nice from the block. Nice Jenny loves some cock. I think this is the right time to find her real name. Yeah, if you ask in the beginning, it's uh, it's too early. You know, it is quite personal because obviously she's using her stage name to kind of protect her from stalkers and, you know, being <laughs> on that personal level. But by now, it's already time and you can. You do look like a Jenny, actually. What do you mean? I'm not going to say yet, but don't worry, it's something good. Hmm. So since you know my real name, I'm going to tell you what's on my mind. Okay. My dream is to open a dog rescue center. I thought you wanted to be a Twitch streamer. What the fuck? You got too many goals, son. Connect on it and offer to buy a cocktail at the bar. Yeah. Dog rescue Wet the center whistle. would be great because you know so many people these days are just selfish and they don't do anything to make the world a better place. But if you care about animals, you should really do it. You know, and that's fantastic. Well done. Thank you. That's well it. done. I saw earlier the barman here is pretty good, isn't he? He made some nice cocktails. Yeah. So, so. Uh, if you're ready for a break, why don't we go have a drink? I'll buy you a drink. Yeah, that's yeah? good. Yeah. Alright, cool. Because I'm still oh. waiting for Mahmoud, but he's really late, so... <laughs> I'm uh, waiting for Mahmoud. What's your favourite cocktail? Uh, Old Fashioned. So moving the action to the bar is nice. It's kind of like a mini date, you know? You're in this environment. And yeah. Like, okay, let's go over there together for a moment. Yeah, it's a nice way to, to get to know her as well. It definitely is. Let's sit here, yeah? Yeah. And what should we get? Whiskey sour? Why not? Hey man, can we get two whiskey sours, please? Thanks very much. You know what? Um, actually, I like living in the city, but sometimes I miss my family back home. Oh yeah? You're all alone here? Yeah. That's quite hard, right? Because you come like to be an independent woman and do your work, do all your stuff. But of course, family is so important, yeah? So it must be tough. Yeah, it's really difficult. Sometimes. But still exciting. And what's for you important in your life? What's important in my life? Computer games. The most important thing, son. Very flexible, not especially interested in anything. No, don't do that. I mean, don't get us wrong. Nah, I, I was about to say, I'm not particularly bothered about anything, so, but I, I actually am. I actually am. I think if anyone asks us that I'm not trying to get at the neck, I'll just be like, yeah, I'm not bothered because uh, be I can't really be asked to talk to, to people most of the time. I like I like hearing their stories um, rather than talk about me. I like to just sit and be quiet and just enjoy food. That's what, If I go out, chances are I'm going out to get absolutely my belly full of food. That's all I want to do. Uh, so I'll listen to other people chat shit. Honestly, I just want to play video games and fuck girls. You know what I mean? That is... That is that's what I want to do. That's what life's about. Assume she obviously wants to fucking cut the chase. You share some of your passions and make very clear statements about what you want from life. Oh, we need to be honest. I really honest like the two best things. Policy. I like playing computer games. I like playing Bloodborne, Dark Souls. Oh, Dark Souls, uh, amazing. Fighter, Monster Hunter, all that. But I also like fucking girls. So really, I just have this fantasy. And I'm just playing the game and she's sucking me off. And then, you know, I'm playing it and bumming her. And stuff. Stop talking bullshit. I'm going to punch you in your dick. <laughs> my dick yeah <laughs> you could do that but i know some ancient secrets and i can just suck my balls and you dick in know. wait let me do it i'll suck my balls and dick inside my body and then it won't hurt wait some ancient monk wisdom nothing suck at the no. bore in the body cavity no. what oh man try keep trying i'll drink dude is that it you give up what well, she's not impressed with that is she for real you want to try babe Come. Call me Iron Dick. <laughs> so I'm going to need some help here with this one. What, what was... Uh... I think that uh, there's honesty and then there's honesty. 
What? Do you understand? No. No. You're either honest or you're not. So yeah. No, no. What this guy said was like, oh, I'd love to like have a fantasy of like playing a game and having someone suck us off. No, that's not a fantasy because you can only do one or the other. There's no multitasking when playing games, and there's no multitasking while having sex. It's either one or the other. Because if you're playing a game concentrating, and she's sucking you off. Guess what? I'm not gonna come because I'm fucking concentrating on fucking destroying the four kings on Dark Souls, and that requires intense concentration. Um. In the same way, if I'm getting sucked off, I want to be laid back, hands are behind my head, and enjoying it. I didn't want to be fucking stressing myself out playing a computer game. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Bad advice. Listen to my advice instead. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go with this one. This is the professional one. This is the right answer. That's an interesting question. I think that for me, life is all about finding the balance. The balance between the things that you need to do, like working, earning money, all of that you know, rubbish, and then the things that you should do, the things that you love to do, the things that are good for you know, your friends and family that make the world a better place. So I think for me, the most important thing is finding that balance to make sure, you know, like now my phone is not ringing. I try to keep it on silent and to, to have, you know, like a real connection with people. And then I think, you know, I'll be happy. Nice. That's the right answer. Uh, speaking passionately about something is actually attractive uh, for a guy to do, at least I think so. What do you think, Charlotte? Absolutely. If you can talk passionately about your hobbies and your job, then you might be a, you know, you're a passionate kind of person. It draws people in and gives them that kind of good energy. So, yeah, it's the right option. I want to know who she is. Is Actually, she uh, quite hungry? Oh, why don't you order something? Is she a coach food? as well? Uh, I'm not gonna eat when I'm working. No? No. Okay. Well, what kind of food do you like? I like Italian food, like pasta maybe. Oh really? Well, yeah. I'm half Italian. Oh. Yeah. My granny, she lives in the south of Italy. She makes mm, like amazing pasta, fresh pasta sauce. Sorry, if I talk about it, I'll make you even more hungry. But yeah. it's really, really good. Right, so let's. I think this is a stage where we arrange a date to go and get us some pasta. Listen, I'm really horny. Why don't you just suck me off in the toilet? It's a good answer. We could go with that. Suggest meeting for food one day when she's not. That's the best one, isn't it? But I think I'm in love with you. Would you like to be my girlfriend? No, don't ever say that. That'll that'll just wow. Just what a bitch thing to say. Suck us off in the toilet. Jenny, you know. I'm so happy we met, and I think we have this beautiful connection. <laughs> so would you say you come and suck me off in the toilet? <laughs> just a quick BJ, you know? Go well, on, just a quickie, how eh? Yeah. I just bought you a drink. Just, what's up? You disappointed me so much. Why, don't I, I? I just, I thought you were a good guy, but... I'm good, I just like getting sucked off. Exactly. You're just an <laughs> asshole. I mean, I've heard it before, but... Not Wait, when I, mean, I bought you a drink, that's the least you could do. Ah. Hey babe, how you doing? You want, you want a whiskey? You busy? He's offered her a whiskey, right, that is hilarious. I'll just watch you for a bit, then I'll go to the toilet. Sort of... yourself out. Ugh, this is abhorrent behaviour. Abhorrent, yeah? Yes. <laughs> Agreed. What? This is definitely the one. How well, then we'll set the date. I've got a good idea. One night when you're not working, we could go out for a nice dinner. Go to a cool Italian place, have some wine, some pasta. I think it'd be really good. What do you think? Yeah, it sounds nice. All right, great. I think this puts the ball in her court again. You're leaving it up to her to understand that work is important, but it's on her terms. Yeah, and a dinner is probably quite a good date in this situation. Good one to suggest. I like that idea. Company, actually, so we should keep in touch. Why don't you give me your number? Of course, I will give you my number. Okay. Ooh. How to get the number? Hand her your phone would be the the one. That's that's. 
That's what I told you to do in the in the other episode. If you hand her your phone, then you ring it. But then again, she's not going to have a phone on her because she's working. But then record using a voice memo. That's that's shit. That memorize it. Not going to happen. I cannot remember anything. I'd get like I remember the first the first number and the first number always a zero and that that was as far as I'd get. All right, babe. Well, great. So here you go. Put your number in my no, phone. No, no, no. You're not allowed to do, do that here. No, it's fine. Of course what? Not. No, no, no. Oh, hey, man, what are you doing? Baby, come on, help me, Jenny. What's what your the number? Fuck? Say it. Call it. Shout it. What? So this is a no-no. Um, obviously, if she handles your phone, then the bouncers are gonna not like it because yeah. it's against the rules. No rule breakers. Oh, I didn't know that. Is that a thing? Oh, well, fuck me. We've got to be 007 covert ops. I didn't know that shit. Well, learn something new. So the next time I go out to the strip club, do not handle the phone? Otherwise, I get thrown out. Gonna have to be recorded using a voice memo. Oh, am I gonna get thrown out for doing that? Listen, Jenny, I know you're not allowed to give your number in this place. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my phone. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, look, I've seen a message. Now I'm gonna pretend I'm on the phone. <laughs> so what's your number? So it's 29. 29. 955 955 72 71 11 All right, bye mate. Cool. All right, Mahmoud. I'll see you later, dude. That's hilarious. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's all right. See ya. I'm sorry. Now I've got your number. Bling bling. That's the right option because actually dancers in the club they're not allowed to give their number out. Um so I didn't know that. yeah That's so new. a lot of guys don't know it so if you offer the phone it's a big faux pas um so recording it with a voice memo is a smart way to do it because no one can can see what's going ah, on circumventing the down. rules you little trickster you could do as long as it doesn't look like you're writing down her phone number casanova beasted so what did i not get right the first option was Fuck you and your fucking family, you remember? I tried that, that was wrong. That's the right option, uh, well done. Let her sit in your lap and tell her she's squashing your balls was the medium one. Oh, maybe you, you had to tell her to sit next to you. What was the next one after that? Uh, yeah, don't tell her about sex, apparently. And... So, so. And going for a lap dance was it was a, was a medium. It was an amber. <laughs> amber, that's what she was called as well. So what you would have to do is for probably the, the super seducer would be to not get the lap dance and just keep it professional. Oh, so, right, fair uh, enough. Well, that was still a pretty pretty interesting lesson. We learned a couple of things. Don't hand your phone over in a strip club, otherwise you get sparked up by the bouncers. Right, let's find out what the next episode is. I quite like that episode. It was good. Oh, looking for a one-night stand. This one is a piece of piss. There's just... You don't need to put any effort into it. You can be as stupid as you want. You can be as ridiculous as you want. You can try out even the most ridiculous one-liners, the most ridiculous things, come out and say just by here, you pet, you want your fanny smashed. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. If you're looking for a one-night stand, just depends on the calibre of woman you're going for. Um, you can just go for some dirty slags, that, that's all they want. I was out on a night out. Uh, actually, no, sorry, I'm lying. I wasn't on a night out. I was actually at the... I went down late at night to get some takeaway food and it was the time when it was it was it probably wasn't even that late, it was probably about half eleven. Um and I was in the kebab shop and there was a girl in the shop asking everyone Fucking if you'll take us home, I'll let you fuck us. I'm not even kidding you. Sure no one in the shop was just looking at her was an absolute fucking mess right uh, and then once everyone in the shop was like nah we're not coming home with me uh, she went to the people outside like the taxi drivers uh, when I got in the car she came over but at the time I had like I was in my nice car and I'd seen her previously other people she was kicking that fucking cars when they said when they said like yeah I don't even know what to do with you she was fucking going wild and kicking the car I just thought this is this is not for me like so as soon as I seen her I fucking approach and ask me if I'd fucking take her home for a fuck I just fucking sped off because uh, it's not even worth the hassle like getting your property damaged for a stupid slag like that but there you go that's how easy it is you can literally go on a night out to a kebab shop just wait there until you get some drunk whore 
asking for a lift home and get yourself sucked off now bother so looking for a one night stand should be really really easy uh, so that's going to be happening in the next episode see you there lads <laughs>